All right, in this lesson, we are going to take you through or walk you through the simple income tax formula and what components go into calculating the final tax that's due on tax day. So let's take a look here. So the tax world is a complex place. Um, you probably already knew that, but there is just a lot to calculating taxes because we have what we would call some would say loopholes, although really there's all of these deductions and credits that you can get and, and we try to adjust the income just right so that you're paying the right amount of taxes according to what Congress believes you should pay. And so it really is a complex place when it comes to taxes. And so to do this justice by saying, hey, there's a simple income tax calculation is not necessarily correct, but you need to know it going forward because you can see where we start with this simple equation and then we start adding to it. So this is kind of that basic income tax formula that if you know it, you at least know a good amount of what goes into a tax calculation. Now the Internal Revenue Code doesn't really make calculating tax easy by any stretch of the imagination. And we can break down the conversation of taxation into basically seven categories that we're going to introduce to you in this video. So what are they? Well, we always start with income. So we take your income. It's typically for most taxpayers on their W-2. Uh, it's reported by their employer to the federal government and to the taxpayer in the form of that W-2. And then from there, we subtract what we call permitted income deductions from income. So Congress basically passed laws that say that these deductions can be deducted from your income. So for instance, if you go back to school, you might qualify for a deduction for going back to school. If you are um, saving for retirement, Congress is wanting you to save for retirement, so they're gonna incentivize you by saying, hey, if you save for retirement, we'll let you have a deduction to your income, reducing your income by the amount that you put away towards retirement. So we take our income, subtract our permitted deductions from income, the key word here, permitted, and then we get our taxable income. That taxable income is what we use to calculate our preliminary taxes. So it's not our income on our W-2, we adjust it for these permitted uh, deductions and we get to taxable income. From there, we use the appropriate tax rate. Now, if you watched any other of the videos prior to this one, you know it's not as simply as taking the tax rate and multiplying it by the taxable income. We usually have to go through a bracket way of calculating it unless you are in the 10% tax bracket, then literally it would be times 10% but for a vast majority of taxpayers, it may not be that simple. So once we do that, we get our tax liability. I call this the preliminary tax liability. So this is not necessarily what you owe right now because you can make adjustments to this even after we've calculated the tax. So preliminary tax liability. And then from here, we subtract any tax payment and credit. So if you've been uh, paying your taxes through, let's say, estimated tax payments. If you don't know that what that is, that's okay. We'll get to it. But if you've done that, then you would subtract it from here. If you have an if you have a regular job, your employer already deducted federal tax payments from your paycheck, every paycheck, and they've submitted to the federal government those funds on your behalf. That amount gets subtracted from here. And then credits. You may be offered credits by the federal government as incentives to do one thing or another based on what the federal government wants to incentivize you to do. For instance, they might want to incentivize you to go to school. So there's the education credit, and that will come off of this amount here. Once we've done that, then we get our tax refund or tax due on our return. So technically speaking, the tax liability is your tax, but because our employers uh, pay the government our tax early because we make estimated tax payments, because we're given these credits, a lot of times many people associated with how much they paid in taxes with this number when it really should be about this number here. So 
Again, don't get too confused here. This is this tax liability is really what your taxes are. This right here is what you still need to pay or what you're getting back from the federal government because you overpaid during the year. So if I said, what's your tax for the year? It's not this refund or tax due, it's really this amount. But because most taxpayers don't understand how tax law works, they think that what they pay or what they're getting back from the federal government at the end of the year is their tax number, and that's simply not the case. So again, I wanna keep you very educated here on how the tax um, law works and how it's calculated at the end of the day. So again, if we're asking what's the tax liability, that's your tax. If we're asking what your refund is, that is after you've made payments. Or if we say how much tax is still due, that is because you didn't pay enough to satisfy all of your tax liabilities. So that's kind of the basic, simple income tax formula. We're gonna to add to that as we get deeper and deeper into uh, the conversation of individual income tax, but we wanted to give you a framework of basically how tax works. We start with income, we take away deductions to get your taxable income, that taxable income is what we use to calculate your preliminary tax. Then we, we will take away some credits. We may take away prepayments. And from there, we get your tax due or a refund allocated back to you on your tax return. So I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next video.